this is Danny and I tried I tried to do my hair this morning and I had clear elastics holding it in braids and the thing just snapped while I was eating lunch so I gave up I put everything down I don't even care anymore not happening but other than that today's video is about teaching now I've taught at two schools now um, my second school I haven't taught too long I've seen classes maximum of five times so I've either seen the classes I want to say three to five times now so I kind of got an idea of the differences in schools and students okay so again I have the notebook I think this is gonna be a normal thing you see is me looking down so first thing I want to talk about is lesson planning now with the previous school I was at was there for two years and you would think that I could use like the first year's lesson plans for the second year well my first year my lesson plans aren't actually that good even I'll admit that they're pretty terrible I never got formal training in lesson planning so I had to learn it on my own get better at it so typically I don't use my first year lesson plans I will edit them like crazy and the second reason I don't really use them or well I didn't use them my second year at that school was because I had had some of the students okay let me explain this part some high schools uh, high, uh, middle school students will start high school early if they did really well on an exam so they're like the smart kids so they they're like advanced so they go to school earlier than their peers would so their class is already advanced by the time everyone shows up for their first year. So I call them rising first years. So I taught them for, I want to say three months my first year, and I used some of my previous lesson plans. So when I taught my second year, which means I was teaching the kids I had had before for three months, I decided not to use any of my previous lesson plans because I didn't want to figure out whether or not they had seen it before and I just I didn't want to deal with that so I just made all new ones for my second year now coming into my third year I thought new school I wouldn't have to do any lesson planning whatsoever um a lie a lie because my first school was it's the top school in the area so their English level is really good they have really high levels the school I'm at now their English is much lower it's not that I'm incapable of doing stuff it's, I need to, they're not dumb, okay? They're not dumb. I'm not going to say dumb it down. I have to simplify a lot of the words I use. And I need to put way more pictures into my slide. So I still have to edit every week. However, I don't make completely new lessons. Like, I don't start from scratch. I take an old one, and then I just revamp it. Now, one thing I've noticed to be an issue so far that I have to you know take into account once we get back from the break that's gonna happen is they have much shorter attention spans than my previous students so the kids I have now they have lower grades like when they take exams they don't make as good of grades but I think honestly that's attention span like if you have a short attention span taking a, like a three-hour exam it's gonna be absolute torture and you're not gonna do well so I kinda get it not saying they're incapable it's just with the style of school that is here and something that's even natural to me to teach is like just do a lecture and then an activity I've learned that I need to break it up so I'll update you on that once I do that and see how that goes but yeah even my lesson planning now although I don't make completely new PowerPoints I've still got to edit them quite a bit another thing just about ooh, ooh, I have a table here and I knocked something over another thing that I have to deal with is the classroom. At my first school, I had my own classroom, so they came to me. So I had a lot of power in the room. I could move the desk, I could take out the desk, I could make it just chairs. I could do essentially whatever I wanted in the room. But with my new school, I don't have a classroom. I have to go to their classrooms, and they're already set up for something. So I kind of have to work around that. So if I want any group work, I have to tell them, okay, now we have to make a group instead of them coming in and just sitting with groups like I would if I had my own classroom and could move my desk. So that's a little bit annoying, but 
it is very helpful to me because then I don't have to worry about it because my biggest issue with having your own classroom is when they would have exams they would move desks out of my classrooms because they didn't want to clean theirs out for exams so they'd move theirs in the hallway and then move my classroom's empty desk into their classroom but then they would never bring it back so like I never had enough desks and chairs for my students so with going through the classroom that eliminates that issue so that's pretty good and also if like I end early I can just walk out I don't have to keep the kids for the full time I literally just walk, like if it's like three minutes till the end I've got nothing to say no questions nothing like that I just leave there's no point why not office hours another thing at the first school they kind of like alluded that they wanted me to sit in the office but there's no point because no one would talk to you I'm like I own a laptop I do my PowerPoints there the computer in the office is in Chinese like what am I going to do in the office because teaching 18 hours a week I'm like I'm already in the classroom way more than any of the teachers not saying that they're not doing they're doing way more work than me but why would I want to sit in the office like, I don't I don't want to you're not gonna talk to me no one's in the office when I'm in the office because like I take the classes that were empty like if they had a study period they would put my class in that so the teachers would be in the office at that time but then when I'm out of the classroom they're in the classroom because they're teaching now so it just it never mixed up so I just never sat there but my third year here I was like I'm gonna sit in the office I'm gonna you know talk to everyone I don't even have an office there's no office so I can't even do office hours so that was shot so I can do whatever I want honestly so that's pretty great. Something else that's a little bit different, and this is me personally changing it, is my relationship with students. At my first school at Lijong, um, I was kind of like putting like the American barrier of where, you know, oh, we don't get too close and things like that. My second year there, I kind of gave up on that because they don't see me as a real teacher anyway. Like they call me teacher, but I'm not a real teacher. Like I don't give exams, I'm not graded. They, they talk back <laughs> so with that you know I just kind of fell away with the uh, the really stunted relationship I tried with like the respect me I'm your teacher oh we can't talk to each other outside of school stuff um, I got over that real quick I've gone to see movies with students I've gone to students homes here which apparently is kind of normal like, the student-teacher relationship is quite different. There, I know there is at some point a time where the teachers literally just go to their students' homes to visit parents. Like, that's still a thing that happens here in China. So I'm like, oh, you can be closer with your students. Now, with that relationship, I also did not allow my students to say any bad words at all in my first school. But my second school, I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. I'm very... I started off being very sweet to my kids. I have some students that I literally I hug I give them hugs like it's not an issue of course not any of the boys not because that's my thing it's this is a gender divide in China but like I've given students my WeChat first week if they asked for it I gave it to them um, like I talked to like one kid like almost he actually sneaks his phone into the school and I talk to him at like lunch and before he goes to bed like he goes to bed way later than me, I can tell you that much. But yeah, like, and also, I, I allow them to say bad words. I'm like, if you're, I don't allow them, like, to direct it towards someone, but if they say a bad word, I'm just like, you didn't really use it in the right context, stuff like that. Like, I'm, I'm helping them to use it better. So yeah, so like, I'm a, way more lax with my relationship this year. There are two things, though, that I will say are the exact same. The exact same. And that is water and my teacher voice. Water. I drink so much water in the classroom. I drink probably a full bottle during a class because of the amount of chalk in the air. Like, if I don't have water, I will die from the, like the chalk just erasing the board. Like, no, 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 no. So, biggest tip: if you like teach here or if you want to do this, bring a water bottle to every class, every class. The second one is teacher voice. I can be very, very loud. Okay, very, very loud. I don't normally keep that pace as I'm older now like I don't just like I know as when I was younger I could just yell for like a whole conversation and my parents would have to be like chill chill calm down like it ain't, 
be quiet. Here, I, I turn it on and off, but in the classroom, I can get very, very loud. Because um, at my first school, my class, my classes were ginormous. My second year, I had plenty of classes that were 50 students each. And the acoustics in the, well, the classrooms are pretty much empty except for desks. So the acoustics are crazy. So you usually try to get their attention. I'll either do a really deep, loud hey, or I'll do this high pitch whoa! And the kids will start mocking me. Like, once I did it, they'll, like, echo it back. <laughs> but I use that way more at Lee Jung. At the current school, I still do a very loud voice, a really loud hey. And I've only ever had to do the high pitch scream every now and then because most of my classes are actually quite small. Like a lot of them are like 30 students. I only have one, no, two that are really, really big and really, really talkative. But yeah, but I mean, still my throat hurts. It does hurt your throat. So this was my video on teaching. Um, I don't know if it's kind of a comparison of the schools I've been to, my first and third year, what I've learned, stuff like that. So if you have any other topics you want me to talk about, any questions or anything, leave it in a comment. I would like it if you subscribed a lot. If you want to see my daily life, you can follow me on Instagram at, at dannyblack33. And you can follow me on Snapchat as well, same thing, dannyblack33. I don't post there way too much because VPN's not usually all that great sometimes here. But I'll try and post more. But I will see you hopefully next week. Bye-bye.